Today we are continuing our underwater advent journey. We'll wrangle binary numbers, compute the power consumption of our submarine, make sure our life support is in order and more while writing some Kotlin. I'm your host, Seb, and you're watching Advent of Coding Kotlin, Day 3, Binary Diagnostic. As usual, if you want us to keep going with these videos, remember to subscribe, drop a like down below, and give us some encouraging words in the comments. All right, let's go. This year's AOC has a nautical theme. If you haven't noticed that bit yet, check back on episode 1 and episode 2 of our series where Anton and Pasha already solved the first challenges around sonar sweeping and diving. We are on maintenance duty today, so we'll be working with a report of binary numbers where we need to calculate a few values in order to get our stars. For part one of the challenge, we need to generate two binary numbers from a whole catalog, the gamma rate and the epsilon rate. Let's see how the gamma rate is calculated according to the problem description. Our input is a list of binary numbers, just like this one. The gamma rate as a binary number is always the most common bit for each position in the binary numbers. So what does that mean for our example? Let's consider the first position or the first column. We have more ones than we have zeros, so this bit in our result would be a one. We repeat the same process for the second position, examine all the bits in this position again, there's more zeros than ones, so our result number is a zero here as well. We continue this process until we've looked at each column once and determined the full binary representation of our gamma rate. The epsilon rate is calculated in a very similar fashion, only this time we are going for the least common bit in a given position instead of the most common bit. Apart from that, we're pretty much repeating the same process again, look at the column, determine the least common bit, and put in our resulting number. Once we have done all this hard work, we can convert these numbers into decimal and multiply them to get the solution which will bring us our first star in the submarine lore that is the power consumption. Of course, our real inputs are much larger and the numbers themselves are longer. But we do benefit from playing through this because we can observe one interesting property of the gamma and epsilon numbers. In binary encoding, they're the inverse of each other. This might come in handy when we start writing our program. And speaking of which, let's start writing our program. I'm using the advent of code Kotlin template, which we created for our AOC 2021 and Kotlin campaign. You can find that in the Kotlin hands-on organization on GitHub. It comes with a bit of scaffolding just to make it easier to get started with writing the solutions. I've already copied the input files to the source directory and I've added a little bit of code to read the input and check our solution at the bottom of our main function. Nothing particularly interesting, really we can just move straight to what we came here for which is solving part one of the challenge. First, let's get rid of the to-do placeholder. From our discussion, we know that we are going to need to iterate our list of inputs. Um, that is just a list of strings containing ones and zeros, but we need to iterate it column by column. We can assume that all the numbers in the input have the same length, so we'll use the zeroth element and save its indices into a variable. The indices function just gives us every valid index from the string that we're accessing. So every number from zero to size minus one. This allows us to just write a little for loop where we go over each column. To figure out if there's more zeros or ones in a specific column, we need to count them. In an ideal world, we could just call a function like this on a string. Well, but as you can see, the standard library doesn't have this super specific feature. But with the power of extension functions, we can build this exact function ourselves though. So we define a private extension function on lists of strings, which takes the column as a parameter. Then we just do some simple math. We keep track of the ones and the zeros and check in each line at the position of our current column to see what bit we find. At the end, we can just return both the zeros and ones as a pair, which can be constructed with the infix operator two. Since we only decided on the return type of this function just now, we can invoke a quick fix to change it and get back that pair of two ints. However, I'm not quite happy with this yet. I like it when my function signature tells the user more than just, I give you two ints, good luck finding out what they mean. I think it's a good practice to define a small data class for this. So let's call it bit count and have it store the zeros and ones explicitly. Yes, we have to write an extra line of code, but I think it just makes our solution that little bit more expressive. Okay, back to our actual implementation. Now that the function count bits in column exists, we can access the bit count and get the zeros and the ones out of it. But since 
since we were using a data class, we can be a little bit more elegant here and use a destructuring declaration to do the same as those three lines, getting zeros and ones directly. Next, let's actually figure out which bit is more popular. That's really just an if statement. Now that we have all the individual bits, we need to concatenate all of them together to build the actual number for the gamma rate. We can use the build string function, which gives us access to a string builder as a receiver. And that means that we can just call append inside the block and get that most common bit per column appended. With that, we have half the solution of part one ready. We can turn this string of binary digits back into a real integer by using the toInt function and telling it we're looking at a base two number, which is just another way of saying binary number. We still fail the check, but it does output 22. And if we look back on advanofcode.com, we see that that is exactly what was expected for gamma with those example numbers. Great, that means we can move on to the epsilon rate. And this part is going to be much faster because in our discussion, we observed the property that the epsilon rate is just the binary inverse of the gamma rate. So when you see a one in the gamma rate, there's a zero in the epsilon rate and the other way around. Let's again just apply some wishful thinking and maybe hope for a holiday miracle. Maybe a function called invert binary string already exists. Well, no, that's not part of the standard library again. However, we have a lot of other primitives in the standard library that allow us to write out this function again very quickly. With those, we can first turn the string into an iterable and then use the join to string function to turn each zero into a one and each one into a zero, while at the same time creating a single result string again. Now we just need to multiply these two numbers together to get the actual power consumption of the submarine, which is our final result. With this, we can go back to adventofcode.com and submit our solution and get our first golden star for day three. Awesome. Let's take a moment to really soak up that feeling of accomplishment. All right, moving on. Before we go to part two of the challenge, I wanted to add a little bonus to part one, because now that we've seen that join to string takes a transform function, we can actually rewrite the way to calculate the gamma rate in a more funky, more functional style. We can first take each column number, turn this into a collection of bit counts via the map function, and then use the join to string function with the transformer to morph each bit count into a one or a zero based on which occurred more often. Now that you've seen the solution using build string, append and a loop, and also the map join to string solutions, I'm actually curious, which one do you prefer? Head down to the comments and let me know. And while you're down there, I'd appreciate it if you'd also maybe leave a like. Finally, on to part two. The second part is all about multiplying two numbers again. This time, the oxygen generator rating and the CO2 scrubber rating. We will look at the oxygen generator rating as an example to get a better understanding of how these numbers are calculated at that position. In this part, we are working using a process of elimination. We go through our numbers again, column by column, starting at the very left. We once again determine the most frequent bit, but then for the oxygen generator, we eliminate all the numbers in the list that don't have the most frequent bit at that position. From there, we move on and repeat that process for each following bit. When the one bits dominate, only the numbers with a one in that position stay. When the zero bits dominate, only the ones with the zero stay. In the event of a tie, we're keeping the one bitted numbers. After a few steps of elimination, we end up with only one number, and that's our oxygen generator rating, which can once again be converted to a regular decibel number and then multiplied by the CO2 rating. I'm sparing you the detailed walkthrough for the CO2 rating because once again, the opposite rules apply. Always keep the least frequent bit and use zero as a tiebreaker. Okay, enough visualizing and musing, it's time to write some more Kotlin. While you weren't looking, I sneakily extended the testing part of our app to include a stub for part two and added the checks and prints needed to validate that we're doing the right thing. Let's start our work with the oxygen generator rating and worry about the CO2 scrubber later. Something that you should absolutely not do in real life if you're ever working on a submarine. Let's start by defining a small local function for it and let's fill in some logic. We once again iterate over columns that much is clear, but this time our transformation is a little more involved. We essentially treat our input as a list of candidates and repeatedly filter that list until only one number remains. Let's keep track of the latest list of candidate variables, which begins with, well, all of them. Next, we figure out the most common bit for that column. That's honestly old news by now because we already have an extension function and we already know how to destructure its results. Determining the most common bit is then just a matter of an if-else experience. 
expression. However, it is worth looking twice or even three times at that line of code because we need to make sure it actually treats the tiebreaker correctly. And it does, because if zero and one are equally common, it keeps values with a one in the position that's being considered. Okay, now let's kick out those candidates that don't have the most common bit in the current position. Because I made the choice to use an immutable list here, we use filter to create a new list and assign it to the candidates variable. I'd argue this falls under immutability we can afford, but you can also try your hand at using the remove if function with a mutable list if you'd like. Then we still need to whip up an exit condition. If only one candidate remains, that means we are done. Since candidates at that point is still a collection, we can use the single function to extract the only element inside it and throw an exception in any other case. After all, candidates really should only have one element at this point in our code. As usual, I didn't specify the return type in the beginning, so we can just quick fix the function signature to get rid of any red wiggles and make sure we actually return the string. With that, we can already turn this oxygen generator rating into a number and double check our first partial result. We get 23 and checking back with the official instructions, we are indeed correct. Okay, before we faint, let's also get that CO2 scrubber in order. To do so, I'm gonna do the one thing you're not supposed to do. I'm just gonna copy and paste the code from the oxygen rating. The only adjustment that needs to be done is how we filter our candidates. Now we want to keep those that don't have the most common bit. Well, we multiply this one up by the oxygen rating, slam the run button and boost off to the AOC website to collect our second gold star for the day. And then we come back. Because I don't know about you, but my pride forbids me to just check in such duplicated code into my repository. It's just not nice. Because both of these are essentially the same function, just with a different parameter. We literally only changed one line of code in there, so why have all that other stuff lying around there as well? That does not spark joy. Thank you copy-pasted function for getting us to the goal, but now go away. Let's take the oxy rating function and turn it into a rating function that is not oxygen specific. Instead, we can now give it a parameter that determines the type of rating. I know it's tempting to use a boolean here, but I'm deliberately choosing an enum because it's much more expressive as you'll see in a bit. We already know only one line of code really changes based on the rating type. So we can just have a when statement to make that distinction. And to round things out, we change our return statement to use the new rating function for both oxygen and CO2. With that change applied, we get to delete 10 juicy lines of code that we no longer need to look at or maintain or think about. The code still works the same, but honestly, I think it's a lot prettier now. Sweet, we're done. That code can go straight into the repository and we can celebrate another problem solved and hopefully some more Kotlin lessons learned. If you're coming up with your own solutions for Advent of Code or if you've coded along to our videos, make sure you share that code on GitHub and tag your repository as AOC21 in Kotlin, which you can do using the gear icon on GitHub. That's not only how you can get your code out there to discuss with other people, it's also how you have a chance to win some Kotlin swag this holiday season. Check out the blog post about Advent of Code code 2021 in Kotlin in the description to learn more about all that. Well, that's it for today. I really appreciate you sticking with me till the end. Enjoy your time, stay cozy, and most importantly, take care. I'll see you in a future video.